Welcome Bay Community members. I'm uh, Dr. Court and we're here with another parenting and mental health series. So tonight I'm wearing my hoodie and being a little sporty tonight because we are talking about exactly that. We are talking about um, parenting and mental health with sports, why sports, and parenting athletes. This is a two-part series, so we'll get through the first part tonight, and we'll talk about why sports. And uh, then we, next week, and this is all in honor of March Madness, that's all getting ready to start. I hope you filled out your brackets. Um, so in honor of that a little bit, we one of my favorite sporting events of the year, um, we're gonna talk about sports and why it's important for youth. So what to expect tonight? We're gonna to first talk about the facts um, of you know why sports, and then we're gonna talk motivation and supporting. Okay, so let's get into it. With less and less time being spent outdoors, what little exposure there is must do more heavy lifting, right? So sports are more and more important to kids, adults, and communities to stay healthy. There's strong evidence that participation in sports during developmentally formative years can have a strong positive effect and some psychological benefits uh, as well as physical benefits. But why sports, right? So, well, first of all, on average, kids today spend about 7.5 hours on screens. That is, whether it's their smartphone, their computer screen for school, or iPads or tablets, or TVs, 7.5 hours. If you think about it, we do that too. If we are working in a desk job, we're spending a lot of time on a screen too. So because of that, we really need to be good about making sure our kids are still being active, especially because right now in the US, 22% of children between five and 12 are considered obese. Not a little chubby, but obese, right? And when, when someone's considered to be obese, that means that their health is not good. Um, we also know, and I've used this stat before, that one in five kids suffer from a mental health challenge, right? That's 20% of the population. And for youth, the three top causes of death are accidental deaths, homicide, and suicide. So we really need to focus on our children making sure that they're mentally healthy right? That's going to help reduce certainly the suicide, probably the homicide too, right? And also you'll learn later, little spoiler alert, that sports can actually help with the reduction of accidental deaths as well. So I think those are some pretty good reasons why we should look more into sport. Something I've talked a lot of parents about recently is the fact that because screens are so addictive today between TikTok and Insta, Instagram and Snapchat and all of the different social medias, right? Along with YouTube, which gives us endless cat videos or whatever, you know, watching other people watch other people watch other people play video games. Kids have endless entertainment. So unlike when I was growing up, we had some video games the TV was, you know, if you had cable, you had some channels, but there still wasn't a lot of good TV. So it, you got bored quickly with the screen, you went outside and you played. Today, they can pick and choose whatever they want to watch. They have a favorite movie, they can pick it and watch it. They have, they get sick of that movie, they find another one. They can binge watch a series. There's just so many options. Like I said, YouTube is, as a parent for me, is the bane of my existence because my kids are always on YouTube. YouTube has a lot of positive things too, right? You can look up a lot of things. You can look up how to do things. 
but it's really hard to constantly police your kids with screens and they are addictive. I find myself getting on a screen and getting sucked in. I'm sure you do too. So what do we do about it? Well, one way is to keep our kids busy and to keep them active, or at least to make sure that the time that they are being active really counts and has the most bang for the buck, so to speak. So let's get into it a little bit more. So why sports? Why do I put sports as why not just take your kid to the gym or go on a walk? Those are good too, right? Well, there's a lot of evidence that strong evidence that there's a correlation has been found between regular exercise and mental health. Not a surprise there. Among students who exercise six to seven days a week, 25%, only 25% felt sad for two weeks or more in a year. Uh, that's compared to 36% of students that didn't, that exercise less than two days a week. So you can reduce your days feeling depressed just by exercising. And we know that as adults, we know that's one of the things we need to do for ourselves. It's also important for kids. Of the students who exercise six to seven days, 15% reported suicidal ideations and 6% uh, recorded suicidal attempts. But this is compared to the kids that exercise less than two days, 25% of kids in this study reported suicidal ideations and 10% of them tried. So again, we're reducing those risk factors, right? Uh, sports have been linked to lower anxiety. And I will also throw in there, sports can be linked to higher anxiety, but that will be part two. When we talk about the good and the bad side of sports. So that'll be part of what we talk about when we start to go into when we are parenting our little athletes and we might go overboard um, and what the research is showing us about that as of late. Um, I, as always, I'm always gonna point you to the research. Um, this is not my opinion. These are, the, these are the studies that I'm finding out there as recent. I try to keep everything as uh, recent as within the last five years. So know that what I'm giving you and I'm learning with you. Every time I do these studies, I walk out of these sessions and I'm adjusting myself as a parent to go, okay, I've got to do better too. This research is pointing towards it. So uh, in a 2019 study found that children who reported that reported no exercise were twice as likely to have mental health problems particularly related to anxiety and depression, compared with those that met the recommended one hour a day of exercise. Um, that study also suggested that physical activity and uh, activity, physically active teenagers were less likely to report depression. Um, other studies have drawn correlations to participation in youth sports and higher self-esteem and happiness, uh, particularly the struts correlation is strong in uh, girls. Participation in youth sports also provides a healthier body image for both boys and girls. And that body image carries into adulthood. And actually a lot of the youth sports um, benefits carry into adulthood. Sports participation is a significant predictor of young adults being physically active. Uh, in fact, adolescents, that play sports are eight times more likely to be physically active as an adult than those that don't play sports as children. Active children are less obese. We know that, that's not surprising. Uh, in a study from the American Journal of Preventive Medicine, researchers analyzed obesity prevention strategies and their ability to reduce obesity by the year 2032. What they found in their study was that after school physical programs, physical activity programs would reduce obesity more than anything else they tried. It reduced obesity more than uh, changing the child's diet. It reduced obesity more than putting a ban on fast food, which is part of change of diet or reducing uh, sugary drinks. Um, so there's something to be said, right? There is a study that was done of college students that found that motives for sport participation are more desirable than that of just going to exercise. So for kids, K 
kids like to play. And so sports are a natural extension of that play, right? It's play with rules. Um, I am particularly in favor of sports just because I see sports as a metaphor for life. I use that a lot. I use it a lot clinically in my office. I'll use it a lot with my kids. And my kids talk about somebody that they don't like, but they have to deal with it or they have to do something they don't like. And I'll talk about all those practices that I went to where I had to do sprints. Um, and those weren't particularly enjoyable, but I knew they were making me better and they make me faster and I'd be able to play better during the game. Or I would talk about certain teams where I had teammates that weren't really my favorite people, but as a teammate, I love them because they, they filled a role. And so I was always supportive of them on the field, whether I hung out with them after it was different. So, you know, sports play a lot of, um, metaphors for life. It can be really helpful. And so that's another reason we also found <clears throat> in another study, we found that, uh, sports actually reduce in adolescents and teenagers risky behavior. So this is going to reduce uh, suicide attempts. It's, it reduces substance abuse. It reduces other types of risky behavior as well. So those accidental deaths, that was the teaser alert go down. Okay. Um, Sports have been tied to higher academic performance. This is another metaphor for life. You know, you practice, you practice, you practice, and then you finally have a game and that's kind of your test. But academics aren't really that much different, right? Kids have homework, they have to study. So through sports, they learn that they have to put the time in to be able to perform at their best. And, and it's a really nice parallel. And so it's not surprising that uh, there's increased uh cognitive performance there just based on behavior. There's also physiological reasons that I will um, share with you in a little bit. Sports or physical activity also increases creativity. If you think about it, one of my, um, well, I can name several elite sports uh, where I see creativity. I certainly see it in the NBA where they get creative I certainly saw it in the World Cup, FIFA World Cup, where a lot of players got creative in the way they moved the ball around. Um, you can see it in a lot of sports. Um, and that creativity is going to help your kids through life. Increased creativity actually is a resilience factor. When people are creative, they are better problem solvers. And when you're a better problem solver, you're better able to deal with challenges. So therefore you're more resilient. Uh, kids that play sports have greater enjoyment, not just in the sports, but in life. So they enjoy a lot of things. There's a lot of increased life satisfaction. It increases confidence um, and self-esteem, especially for youth when they're still learning and trying to figure out who they are and what they're good at, and what they wanna do. Yes, sports can have a lot of disappointment in it, which is another great lesson because we need to learn how to be disappointed. There's a lot of things that happen in our life that are going to be disappointing. No one gets out of that, right? Bad things happen to everybody. And so when you learn how to deal with things that are challenging, you get better at dealing with challenging things. And as we know, as you get older, the challenges only get bigger. So learning those small disappointments when kids are younger through sports helps them deal with those bigger challenges later. So tons of mental, emotional, and social health reason why sports are so important. And then of course, there's the physical reasons. Physically, we know sports play a significant role in health, right? Their uh, sports participation is a significant predictor of young, um, you know, of adults, being physically active, right? If they play sports, and I said that earlier, if they play sports as kids, you're more likely to be physically active as an adult. Um, active children, we already talked about that, are less obese. And something else that I really love is that um, physical activity, specifically playing sports, because there's most sports have a, a fair amount of running, Increase bone density. 
and not just for kids, but throughout life. So physical exercise in adolescents in particular affects the bone mineral density of adults up to 50 years later. This was found in a Japanese study. So their findings suggest that sports at adolescents just have a really long benefit. It also, sports and physical activity also in uh, reduce your, uh, your child's risk for developing cancer or diabetes later in life. Um, particularly if you're interested about the bone density, running is one of the best ways to improve bone density. Uh, and as you get older, a lot of people develop osteoporosis, which is one of the leading causes of falls in older adults and leads to um, potentially life-threatening fractures. Uh, and what these researchers were saying is the best time to prevent uh, osteoporosis is in youth and adolescence by being physically active, running. So sports, why sports? Well, yet again, it, it improves our physical health. So as we move on, why sports again? Sports actually help. We talked earlier about the cognitive performance and, and link to academic performance, right? Sports help teach kids how to interact socially. It improves teamwork skills, social skills, social responsibility, right? It's teaching kids how to share, knowing when to share, when to, how to um, play within a set of rules, right? It sets boundaries. It improves life skills like goal setting, time management, work ethic, empathy, and negotiation, right? On a sports field, you're doing all of that. It also increases personal empowerment and personal responsibility as well as self-control. Right, A kid on a field that's out of control is gonna get called for fouls and they're gonna get taken out of the game. So they have to learn. I saw this actually this year with my son's basketball team. There was one little boy on the team, great athlete, great little player, had a temper. And at the beginning of the season, he really struggled with that temper. You know, he would not get the call he thought he was going to get, or he would lose the ball, or he would get upset with even himself, how he was, you know, playing. And he would yell, stomp, he would get angry. Sometimes then he would get angry and kind of take it out on the other team, either like, you know, kind of pushing a kid out of the way to get the ball or whatever. By the end of the season, his ability to control his emotions or to learn how to harness his emotions differently and, and be more in control of his body and and his reactions improved drastically. It was really cool to watch. And so that was, I got to see it firsthand this past, excuse me, this past basketball season. Um, sports can also improve education and occupational skills like determination, perseverance, grit, resilience, critical thinking. It can, um, sports can also lead to higher levels of academic achievement, like we talked about earlier, and sports uh, can help kids develop leadership skills, right? Leading by example, it improves listening skills, listening to your coaches, listening to the refs, following directions, right? Put it, problem solving, all of this is, all of these skills can be used academically and in life professionally. So sports have so many great benefits. So I wanted to show you this. This was uh, uh, an MRI of children's brain. Okay, so sports activities help children develop and improve cognitive skills according to a study. Uh, they tracked kids from kindergarten through fourth grade. And in this study, the physical activity in general is associated with improved academic achievement, including grades, standardized test scores, et cetera. 
Such activity can also affect attitudes in academic behavior and enhance concentration and attention. As I'm sure many of you have seen with your own kids, when they get enough physical activity and they get that socialization that comes with playing sports, they come home, they want to take a shower, they want to go to sleep because they're tired, um, which is great. High school athletes are more likely than non-athletes to get degrees, which is what I was alluding to a little bit earlier. And team captains and most valuable players achieve in school at even higher rates. Uh, high school athletes are more likely to expect to graduate from a four-year college compared to non-athletes. And according to some recent data collected um, from a healthy sport index, uh, a higher percentage of high school athletes also receive A grades when compared to non-athletes. The benefits continue in the workplace. A survey of 400 female corporate executives found that 94% of those corporate executives played sports through their youth and teen years. Um, and 61% of them attribute part of their career success to playing sports. I've said it, sports taught me a lot and each sport taught me something different, right? I uh, ran track. Pat taught me that I owned my own destiny. And if I didn't put in the work, I wasn't going to win the race. So I had to put in the work and track workouts can be really boring sometimes. So I had to learn how to make them fun. Uh, so, you know, dealing with boredom, being responsible for my own actions was something track taught me. I talked earlier about team sports, learning how to get along with people that might not have a lot in common with, but on the field, I see their value. So finding strengths in other people, um, it was really helpful skill that I learned. Also learning how to play a role, right? When we're in professional settings, we have to learn how to play certain roles uh, in order to be part of a team. And when kids play sports, they learn how to do that. Uh, it also taught me about disappointment. It taught me how to deal with challenges. So there's so many things that sports helped with. So this scan, sorry, I was taking a while to get to it, but this is an MRI scan. They did this, uh, um, you know, looking at kids just after a 20 minute walk. We're not even talking about it, you know, high intensity workouts or anything. Just from a 20 minute walk, you increase the brain activity. So when we're getting rid of recess, it's at the detriment, right? Because you want kids to go out, run around, be active. So when they come in, their brains lit up, they're ready to learn. This is also part of flow science. So if you've ever heard of an athlete talk about being in the zone, uh, when an athlete's in the zone and, and actually when anyone's in the zone and you've experienced it probably too, just when you've been somewhere and time kind of disappears and you kind of lose your sense of self. You're just enjoying yourself so much that everything just kind of flows, right? So when this happens, uh, there are different stages in flow. Part of it is the struggle, right? That's kind of the learning phase. Um, or that could be like the workout phase, a hard work phase, right? And then you go into uh, a period of rest. And then right after that, you are able to kind of find some flow. And then after that, you have to take some restorative type of activity. Exercise is restorative for our brains, right? It might be tough on our bodies, but it's giving our brains a break. So Having kids go out, run around, it's giving their brains a break. It's actually helping them to learn better. So when they do that, the brain's able to process, right? It finally is getting a break from doing all the hard work up in the working memory. And it's now able to start putting stuff back um, in, in long-term memory and process things and, and, and put things together in that way. So exercise is really important part of the learning process. So something I thought was cool, uh, I found this and I, the study um, from the Aspen Institute showed that active communities are healthier. I mean, yes, okay, that's kind of obvious, right? If you're more active, you're probably healthier. Um, the study looked at 
the top 10 cities in the U.S. Um, and what they found is, and they measured these, um, they measured these cities based on um, an American fitness index to understand the values, the capital and the financial investments and the environments of the community that invest in sport and recreation. And the cities with the highest scores were considered to have the strongest community fitness. And the concept was comparable to individuals having strong personal fitness. So you can see that in cities where they, they design their cities to be active, okay, where they had parks, they had places for people to do active things, uh, people smoked less, the obesity rate was lower. Uh, they had lower, you know, lower blood pressure, um, a higher than average quality of life index, which meant they got more joy out of life. Uh, higher property values. How about that one for a benefit, right? More sports, more activity, higher property values, higher graduation rates, better schools, uh, less unemployment, higher air quality. So things you wouldn't necessarily think are connected were really connected. Okay, so what else? So in the same study, I found a little bit more. This was just reiterating. This is kind of a summary of all the stuff we just talked about. Active youth do better in life. And that's what the research shows. They are less likely to be obese. They get up to 40% better test scores, right? So it helps them cognitively. It, they are less likely to use or abuse substances. They're also less likely for women, less likely to get pregnant or to engage in risky sex. 15% more likely to go to college. And that percentage, I would say, um, varies depending on the study you look at. I think it's even higher than that for a lot of studies. Uh, you know, better mental health, better self-esteem. They tend to earn more, right? They tend to go to uh, school after high school. Um, so just so many things that contribute to why sports are so important. So have I convinced you yet that sports are really important? So that's what we're gonna talk, that's what we talked about tonight. What I wanna go into next week, and I want you to bring your questions. Please post the questions on Facebook. What I wanna focus on is I want to dig into uh, what kids think of as sports and where we've kind of gone, I would say, awry, okay? Um, there are a lot of youth playing sports. It's great. I would say around here in the Bay community, there's so many opportunities to play sports and sometimes we can take it overboard. So we have to find that balance of making sure our kids are active. They're getting off those screens, right? They're getting out there and finding the balance between that and being able to allow kids to learn all those lessons and have fun and learn a skill and get all the benefit out of it without bringing in some of the negative. And I'm sure for some of you, you can relate to some of the negative outcomes that come from youth sports, especially if things get too serious too quickly. And so, so that's the spoiler alert for next week. We're gonna talk about that and um, finding a balance. And I have some really interesting research around the different perception that kids have with youth sports compared to adults. So stay tuned for next week, fill out your brackets, and um, I hope you watch some, we'll all get to watch some really good basketball over the course of the next couple weeks. 
it's uh, so fun to watch all these amazing athletes go out there and try their hardest. And um, so I'll talk to you again next week and we'll talk more about sports with parenting and mental health. Again, I'm Dr. Court. Thank you so much for spending time with me tonight and I'll see you again next week.